Boris Johnson's future looks bleak, but so does the future of some of the world's major economies. Nearly 12 major economies are staring at a recession. This includes the likes of the United States, United Kingdom, Japan, South Korea, Australia, Canada, and the Eurozone. This is according to a recent report by global agency Nomura. It says a number of major economies will enter a recession within the next one year. Right now, central banks have a single mandate. It is to get inflation down, but the tightening monetary policies could choke global growth, thus leading to a synchronized growth slowdown. Recession is technically defined as two consecutive quarters of declining economic output. There is no one reason for this, but this time, rising interest rates, high inflation, negative consumer sentiment, and supply chain disruptions are aiding recession fears. In the United States, Nomura expects the recession to be shallow but long. It could last for five quarters as the central bank focuses all its energies on cooling inflation. In Europe, the slump is predicted to be deeper. It could be further exacerbated if Russia entirely cuts off gas to Europe. For Asian economies, the forecast is dire too. South Korea may take the sharpest hit with a 2.2% contraction. Recession in Japan could, however, be mild due to ongoing policy supports. The only odd one out is China that is recovering as the economy unlocks. Meanwhile, global growth is projected to slow sharply from 5.7% in 2021 to 2.9% 2 this year. We are now being joined by Greg Swenson, a political analyst and founding partner at Brig Macadam. Swenson, what is your assessment of the current situation? How likely is a recession at this point? Well, I, I think it's very likely. In fact, you could argue that we're already in a recession. So I think the Nomura report you know, is, is accurate. But I don't think it's even just an elevated risk of recession. I think, you know, we're in one. I mean, the, the U.S., the biggest economy in the world, the U.S. economy was down 1.6 percent in the first quarter. And all estimates now are pointing to negative growth in the second quarter. I think the Atlanta Fed has uh, has changed their numbers or their estimate to minus one percent. And the uh, S&P GMI estimate is minus one and a half percent. So I think with the U.S. leading the world into recession, it's, it's really inevitable. Greg, what would the immediate implications be for the major economies? Well, I think the, the, the obvious ones are the, the pullback in consumer spending. Uh, you know, with, with elevated inflation and especially higher energy prices, um, in the U.S., especially in the form of gasoline prices, you know, consumers are being forced to pull back on spending or at least replace some of their typical spending with with necessary spending on energy. So I think, the cons you know, given that the consumer is 70 percent of the U.S. economy, um, it's not necessarily that high in the rest of the world. But with with elevated energy prices and inflation in general, I think, you know, I think that recession is either here already or around the corner. And I could also argue that it's already, we're already in a recession here in the United Kingdom. Greg, is there any way for these countries to try and, you know, soften the blow? What can they do at this point? Yes, I think governments could take a, a, a much better role in alleviating inflation. And that's what's going to, that's the only thing that could keep some of these economies from going into a, re a recession, or at least keeping the recession shorter and, and facilitating the recovery. And, and that's by, that's by unleash, unleashing the supply side of the economies. You know, obviously infr inflation is driven by too much demand, too much money in, in, the, in the economy, as well as not enough supply. And so what the what the governments could do, what countries could do is is relax the over regulation of the private sector, especially in the energy sector, is you know pull back on the regulatory overreach, the regulatory burden on companies and allow the supply side to catch up with the demand side. 
it's something that's that's really quite available, um, especially in the U.S., but is in in the the rest of the the world as well, to you know unleash the supply side by reducing taxes on both consumers as well as on companies, and then reducing the regulatory burden on on all sectors, but especially in energy. And that way, you bring energy prices down as well as other prices down as you get more supply into the economy. Greg Swenson, thank you very much for talking to us today. We are also being joined by Andrea from Milan, Italy. He is a geopolitical and economic analyst. Andrea, thank you very much for joining us at this hour. How do you view what Nomura has said? How likely is a recession and how soon? Well, the idea is that we can think that maybe a recession is already going on, that uh, maybe we can check it uh, later on the third, the fourth term of this year, but every element is going to uh, fix the schedule of an incoming recession. We have uh, increasing inflation in the main uh, developed economies. We have problems in trade, problems in energy, uh, semiconductors, chips, we have stopped and uh, distangled global value chains. We have uh, main problems in geopolitical relations. And we have also a plumbing uh, finance with stock markets that are losing almost a fifth of their value all over the world. So uh, maybe the recession will hit hard in the next uh, year. But uh, what about if you think that recession is already there? And only data are not uh, capturing, capturing it. Uh, the main issue is not uh, uh, if, but when we will experience it. Andrea, is there any likelihood that India will be impacted by global recession fears? Well, I think India is in a good position to avoid the worst uh, causes and effects of uh, this recession because, first, it's neutral uh, in the war and in the global dynamics that are experiencing uh, rivalries between and among powers. Second, it has a key role of uh, uh, electronic, pharmaceutical, uh, mathematical, financial, a platform that could be useful both for Russia, EU, uh, United States, and so on. Third, it can use uh, the role of the neutral, uh, far-reaching country that could, for example, be a geopolitical rival of China, but not uh, blocking every commerce, every trade with uh, the People's Republic. It has a very smart approach, and even Italy's Prime Minister Draghi has uh, uh, made us aware of this, uh, uh, recognizing India as a key global player and a key actor for Italy, Europe and Western powers at the last G7 in Germany. And uh, I think in the next G20 in Indonesia, we will see uh, India as one of the main players in uh, uh, shaping the new global order that we may be done. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.